Hey guys, what's up? It's Lucas here again, coming at you today with something a little bit different for this channel. Today we're going to be doing just a quick Game Maker video tutorial. Now, if you know me, you'll know I typically recommend against relying too much on video tutorials, as you'll often end up learning to just copy and paste someone else's logic rather than learn the actual programming logic they are trying to teach. But today's topic is a bit of an exception. This is a subject that I see come up time and time again, with many saying it's too complicated and too unreliable to get right. Well, actually it's neither. This is something I believe anyone can learn and implement, so I thought I'd give a go at breaking it down and giving some examples of how to use it effectively. And of course, as you've probably figured out by the title of this video, this thing I'm referring to is Delta Time. It might sound mysterious, but I promise it's not. When we're talking about the delta of something, all we're really talking about is the difference between two things. In this case, a difference of time. When you're designing just about any type of game, time is very important, and yet it's also something you might not have thought too much about. It's very tempting to just set your project to run at 30 FPS or 60 FPS and call it a day, and to be fair, many professionals used to do this and some still do today. But professionals doing it doesn't justify bad practice. As we all know, frame rates can drop on slower hardware, and 10 years down the road when you've got a remaster on your hands that's locked to an obsolete frame rate, everyone is just frustrated because we have hardware that could easily run the game much faster. So save yourself the headache and do it right from the start. You'll thank yourself later. So as an example, I've got an object here that does three basic time-related things. It moves across the screen, it draws an animated sprite, and it counts down a timer. So if I run the project here, you'll see what it looks like at 60 FPS, which is the default speed new Game Maker projects run at. Timer counts down and repeats, sprite animates, object moves across the screen. Simple, right? But now let's see what happens if I close out of that and quickly change my game speed to 30 FPS instead. So clearly there's a problem here. Everything is running at half speed, which makes sense since we're running at half the frame rate. And the effects get even more dramatic if I bump it all the way down to 15 FPS. That is running very slowly now. And back to 60. So clearly our game is not adapting well to changes in frame rate. Now we could solve this in a very primitive way by simply multiplying everything by 2. Sprite animation speed by 2, movement speed by 2, timer countdown speed by 2, and that would effectively convert our object from 60 FPS down to 30, but of course that wouldn't solve the fundamental problem here, which is that time is actually quite relative in any given program, and we need it to adapt to any scenario, not just going from one known frame rate to another. So this is where delta time comes in. By measuring the difference, or delta, between how long each frame is on screen, we can create a multiplier that tells us exactly how much our speed needs to be adjusted so that it remains consistent. Now, GameMaker has a built-in variable for this, which is simply called delta underscore time. But it'd really be more accurate if this value was called frame time instead, because that's what this value actually represents. The delta time variable in GameMaker is simply how long the last frame took to render, not the difference between the current frame and previous frame. So even though we have a variable named delta time, Keep in mind that that's not technically correct. This is actually our frame time, and we'll have to calculate the delta time ourselves. But it's really not as bad as it sounds. So one important thing to note about the delta time variable in GameMaker is that it is a value in microseconds, or one millionth of a second. So it's very precise, but also very big. Uh, I believe a single frame at 60 FPS would be something like 16,666 microseconds, 0 .6, 0 .6, 0 .6, and so on. So if you're looking at the value of delta time and feeling a little confused because it's so massive, don't worry about it. It's just because it's in microseconds. Okay, so moving on, uh, we're going to start by calculating delta time and creating our own variable, which we can use as a multiplier to offset the animation speed in our object. 
Well, we could apply the same technique to our timer. There's a simpler and better way to go about it, so we'll be handling that one a little bit differently. So we're going to start by initializing a few variables in our create event, which we'll then need to update every frame. First, I'm going to create a variable called target delta, and we want this to be the value our delta should be if everything is running at full speed. Now I'm going to work in milliseconds rather than microseconds here because it's just a little bit more manageable and in some cases actually more useful. So to determine how long one frame should last in milliseconds, all we have to do is divide one by the target frame rate. So we have target delta equals one divided by 60. Or if you're targeting 30 FPS, you can put one divided by 30 or whatever you need for your project. It really doesn't matter, except whatever value you set here is going to be your base frame rate, so to speak. So all of your sprite animations, movements, and whatnot will need to assume whatever frame rate you define here. If all of your sprites are designed to run at 20 FPS, for example, you'd put 1 divided by 20 here and keep your game project running at 60 FPS. That way, sprites will animate it at the correct speed, but you'll still get the advantage of smooth movements and things like that. Okay, so we have our target delta. Next, we're going to create a new variable called actual delta. And this is going to be our actual frame time converted from microseconds to milliseconds. So we simply have to write delta time divided by 1 million. And remember that even though this value is called delta time, it's actually our frame time. So I've stuck with the delta naming scheme to keep things consistent, but just a reminder to watch out for that. Finally, we're going to create one more variable, and this one's going to be called delta multiplier. And we're going to set this to actual delta divided by target delta. So the reason we want to do this is to compare our actual frame time with our target frame time and calculate the difference, which is the delta. So if we have a 60 FPS project that's lagging behind at 30 FPS, this delta multiplier variable will equal 2 because our animations and such need to run twice as fast to keep up. So now we just need to take these last two variables, the actual delta and delta multiplier, and simply paste them into the beginning of our step event so that they will update every frame. Since our target delta isn't going to change, we don't need to copy it into the step event. Now, in practice, you might want to actually make these values global and put them in a persistent object uh, so you don't have to do this for every single object in your game. You can just do it once for your entire project. But for the sake of keeping things simple, I'm going to stick with local variables here, but do keep that in mind. Okay, so now we have our target frame time, our actual frame time, and the delta time between them. So to apply this to our project, we simply have to multiply the relevant values by our delta multiplier variable. So you can see here in my step event that I have a custom myIndex variable, and it's being incremented by one every frame. This animates the circular sprite you saw earlier, and as you could see, it didn't work so well when we changed frame rates, because suddenly it was only updating half as many times per second, or a quarter of as many times per second. But with delta time, we can fix this by simply changing my index plus one to my index plus delta multiplier. And that's it. That's all there is to it to perfectly synchronize our sprite animations to any frame rate we want. Now, if you want a little more control over this, you can, of course, add your own multiplier as well. Like, say, delta multiplier times 0.5, so that the sprite always runs at half speed, or delta multiplier times 2, so that it always runs at double speed, if that's what you want. So you still have complete control over everything. It will simply be adjusted to match whatever frame rate you are running at. And we can apply this principle to movement as well. Down here at the bottom, you'll see I have some code to move my object around. And just like the sprite animation, this needs to be adapted to delta time. So to do this, I simply need to take this x value here and change it from x plus 8 to x plus 8 times delta multiplier. And that's it. Our object movement is now perfectly adapted to any frame rate we want. Last but not least, we do have our timer. And like I said, this one's going to be a little bit different. Well, we could use our delta multiplier to simply offset our countdown speed. I'm going to change our increment here to 
actual delta instead. This way our timer is keeping track of actual time in milliseconds, and again, this will remain accurate whatever frame rate we are running at. In fact, this is just one example of why I always say you should never use GameMaker's built-in alarm system, because there's just nothing alarms can do that variables can't do better. And this is a really powerful example of that, uh, how you can create a timer that tracks actual time rather than frames, and you have complete control over that. That's just something that the built-in alarms do not offer. So, with these changes made, let's quickly change our project back to 30 FPS and run our project again. And you can see that now everything runs at proper speed again. Our project is still set to 30 FPS, but it runs just like if it was 60 FPS. And if I close that and quickly change it back to 60 FPS, you'll see that nothing has changed. Our animations and timer all run at exactly the same rate they're just a bit smoother now that we have more frames in between. And the same would be true if I set the project to 23 FPS, 47 FPS, 105 FPS. It literally doesn't matter what frame rate the game is running at anymore. Our delta time will compensate to keep things running consistently in every case. So, I hope you found this tutorial useful. Maybe you found it cleared up a few things for you. I would highly, highly recommend every game developer use Delta Time in their projects because it's really quite simple and yet very, very powerful as well. That about does it for this one, though. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching, as always, and I'll see you next time.